Hi guys, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create uh, a backup job uh, for your uh, virtual machines running in the uh, vSphere and the VMware uh, ESXi host hypervisor. Uh, so let's get on with it. Uh, for this, you would need to know your the IP address of your uh, vCenter server. So it's pretty simple. Uh, the way that I'm going to show you, it's gonna. Uh, I'm, I'm. I'm hoping it's gonna uh, explain you uh, really well. You know how this all works. So, so uh, as you can see, I'm running a Veeam backup and replication community edition, uh, meaning that it's a free version that I'm using. Uh, this uh, software is heavily used uh, in an enterprise uh, environment where you will be using it to back up uh, multiple VMs, uh, virtual machines, virtual servers, you know. And you can also use this software to back up your uh, physical machines. But in my experience, uh, in an enterprise environment, it's usually used, uh, it's usually used to uh, back up your uh, virtual machines, uh, whether they're running in uh, VMware vSphere environment or uh, on a Microsoft uh, hypervisor. So let's start. So basically you want to make sure that you are, you want to first of all actually go into the inventory and uh, you want to actually, so basically before you start creating your first backup job, you want to uh, add your inventory, meaning like you want to put in, 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 in your inventory what you want to back up. So I'm actually going to delete this. I'm actually gonna uh, just delete this here. Remove server. This is the IP address of my uh, vCenter. <coughs> so let's just let's just start from scratch, you know. So I I should have actually removed it uh, before starting uh, the recording. Let's just uh, remove it and then so I can uh, show you from scratch, you know. So when you first install the Veeam, this is how it's going to show up, you know. Uh, you go into the inventory uh, uh, section here on the bottom left and then you click on add server. And then you choose the VMware vSphere, vSphere. So you can also do the hypervisor, Microsoft hypervisor, but in this example, we're going to be doing a VMware vSphere. So you click on it, and then you click on. So so here is if you read here, it says adds vCenter uh, recommended or standalone vSphere hypervisor. I can also directly add the ESXi host, uh, uh, but recommendation is that you add the vCenter server. So I'm gonna click here, and it's gonna ask. Uh, like what? What do you wanna uh, like? I give the DNS name of your vCenter server or the IP address. I'm just gonna go straight using the IP address, which is 192.168.1.242. Sometimes because of the DNS issues, uh, you may not be able to find your vCenter. So I'm just gonna go hit next, and then you have to. Uh, add the credentials of your vCenter server. I already have them added here, but what I'm going to do is, in order to show you, I'm going to delete them, remove, and I'm going to go back here, add, and I'm going to add the credentials for my vCenter server. So, dot local. And then the password here, and then hit OK. So this is important step. Otherwise, step it, otherwise it won't be able to reach your <coughs> excuse me uh, vCenter uh, server. So you hit OK there, and then uh, this is gonna all work on the port four four three, and then you wanna hit apply, and then. You can read this uh, if you want to, but uh, this is just a certification error, you know, uh, because we don't have a valid public certification 
for our vCenter server. Since we know uh, what we're doing, we know the server is ours, so we trust it. So we just cl click on continue, and then it's gonna start doing its thing. It's gonna start getting, uh, start the process to add the vCenter server in our Veeam inventory. We're just gonna wait here. As you can see, it's uh, says starting infrastructure items update process. As you can see on the left hand side, uh, the IP address showed up there and it's just gonna collect disks and volumes info it's gonna see how, how many uh, uh, ESXi hosts are attached to the vCenter server and how, how many VMs are running on the each ESXi host so we'll just uh, wait it out here everything is green check mark which is what we want to see here so it shouldn't take this long I have a small environment so let's okay so looks like everything is good so we can click on next and then it will give you kind of like summary you know VMware uh, vCenter server this is the IP address was created uh, with some warnings uh, perhaps the warnings are just about that uh, the certificate error you know we don't worry about it you know we know it's our server so we can trust it so we just hit finish so if you go here now you'll see all the VMs you know uh, VM this is the IP address of the ESXi host on which all these VMs are running so this is the vCenter server uh, running and this is my DC domain controller which is running right now all other VMs are off so and let me also show you where all this belongs so this is what we added here if I go here this is I'm logged into the vSphere uh, web client and uh, this is the vCenter and this is what we added in the Veeam you know so all these VMs are gonna show up here it will automatically pull so now let's say we wanted to just only back up DC one let's say so we go back to home we want to make sure the jobs is selected then we go to the backup job we go to here VMware vSphere and then we uh, just say here DC one local backup uh, local backup I'm uh, giving the name is because you can also configure a backup for your offsite in in an enterprise environment you will have one copy saved locally and one in the cloud somewhere or offsite somewhere you know but in this example we're just looking how to create a local backup job so you just click on we're just gonna go here with the defaults so I'm not gonna explain the options like high priority and all that stuff so we're just gonna go with the default options. You name your backup job as you desire. And then here, all you gotta do is click on add. And we it's automatically gonna pick up your uh, environment, whatever you added in the inventory. So you just scroll down here and you pick DC1 or you can just easily type, if you know the name of your VM, you, just, you can just type here and hit uh, enter and then pick your VM add and then it's gonna uh, check its size you can recalculate it it's gonna see how much size of the VM is and then you click next and then here it's just gonna automatically pick up the backup proxy uh, I'm not gonna explain what all this is you can uh, read uh, online or you can or I'll be making other videos probably in the future it's also going to present the default uh, backup repository location where the backup will be stored uh, when you installed the Veeam software it automatically creates a, a backup repository default backup repository so right now I have 194 GB free of 465 GB on it that's basically my uh, volume number D my D drive and then you can choose your retention policy I'm just gonna create uh, just keep it for probably one day 
and then you hit next and then since DC domain controller this option is important uh, you can restore like a single object you know uh, like say you, you deleted a user account or a computer account or a organizational unit from a domain controller you can just pick that uh, deleted object and just uh, restore it you know and that will show up back in your uh, domain controller so this option is important so uh, enable application aware processing so this hit uh, you also want to add the local admin credentials I have already created so I'm just gonna pick these here uh, so this is my home lab I'm just gonna pick these credentials uh, in order to show you how to do this from scratch you can just like click here add standard account and then just home lab admin and password and hit ok when you do that it will show up automatically here so this step I uh, I had already taken two days ago so I added this here you can uh, also run a test if you want to and it's gonna go through the test so you will see here everything should be green check it's it, it's not like really a necessary step here uh, as long as you know the connection we, uh, as long as we already know that the connection was made to the vCenter server you know and all those running VMs and even the re VMs which are ro not running did show up in the VM software in the inventory section so but it's gonna just make sure that the credentials we entered are correct on that uh, for that domain controller <clears throat> that account uh, the home lab underscore admin admin account is the uh, domain admin account you know so it should it should work on all the machines uh, which are domain joined so testing looks like everything looks good again this is not like really a necessary step I'm just gonna wait a few minutes here if it's not gonna if it's gonna take a long time I'm just gonna stop this here I shouldn't have done it like my main oh, okay so there you go it's success you know so our credentials worked on that machine you know so so we're just gonna click here next so again these credentials are the ones that that are your domain credentials the domain controller credentials you know this account lives on that domain controller so you just click next here and then this this step is also important run the job automatically daily at this time uh, I don't want to do that I just wanna pick the days I just wanna run this this is my home lab you know this is not like really a, a production environment you know so I'm just gonna run down Saturday so basically this job is automatically you're gonna run 10 p.m. Uh, only on Saturday and then if some for some reason the first attempt will fail it's gonna try three more times to run the backup uh, after the after that it's just gonna give a log that it failed to run the backup job for whatever reason so retry okay so everything looks good and backup window okay so we just hit apply here and we can just choose run the job when I click finish so the first time when you run a backup job it's all, always gonna take a full backup of your VM so and then the uh, remaining backups will be incremental that's how the VM works so you wanna click here finish and it's gonna uh, start the job here it's running as you can see here so we'll see how it goes okay so this is gonna take some time so as you can see it's like right now it's zero percent complete so
So basically, that's how uh, you will uh, create your uh, backup job, uh, and it's gonna your all your all your backup jobs will show up here. You know, DC uh, one local backup, you know, and this is backup. If you go to backup infrastructure and backup proxies, uh, this is the where it is here uh, backup repositories. This is the default uh, backup application. This is where it's gonna uh, save the backup d colon slash backup okay so this will show you the free space and stuff like that so right now this is going to take its time so and once it's fully done you'll see the uh, result here last result successful and right now it's uh, running a full backup as, as as i mentioned you know the first backup is always full backup okay thanks for watching and uh if you like the content, please do like my video, share, comment, and subscribe my channel. Thank you. Have a good one.